If you look at the elements of broad dollar weakness, of negative real yields for US Treasuries, is there any expectation that you'll see a stop in this rally? I can't see why it will stop, Heidi. It's, it seems like there's you know, or ever need, uh, ever more need to spend more money by the governments. It is appropriate given the uh, the impact the pandemic is having on people. So the community does need this, uh, but that is uh, you know going to print a lot more money. Uh, and I think investors are going to need more exposure to the one currency that you can't print, and that is gold. So where do you expect prices to go from here? Do you think we'll hit that record or surpass that record, and when? I think there is good uh, good reason to believe that we will go past that record. Um, if you can tell me when this government spending will need to stop and the geopolitical tensions which seem to be rising will start to recede, uh, then I can tell you when I think gold will have peaked. But there doesn't seem to be anyone who's prepared to say when that's going to happen. It looks like, unfortunately, it is here to stay for a long time. Uh, and therefore, I think gold has a long way to go uh, and prices will be strong. Have you ever seen a more positive environment for gold than now in your entire career? Well, I think I'm known in the industry as the paranoid optimist because, mm -hmm. yes, I did in 2011 and 2012. Uh, everyone was talking about the fact that the government, uh, through the QE programs in the U.S., was printing money and gold is going to go three, four, five thousand 5,000 U.S. dollars, and that's what people are saying again today. So at Evolution... We are taking the view that whilst we are very supportive of, a, of this gold price environment, it looks great, uh, our job is to make Evolution the most attractive investment opportunity for investors seeking exposure to gold. And for us, that means focusing on margin over volume. and It means generating and banking uh, every dollar above what our long-term gold price forecasts are and running the business as safely and as profitably as we can. You're also in silver, and silver is, in fact, outpacing gains for gold. What are your price expectations there? Well, silver does seem to mirror the outlook of gold, and, and if gold, the gold outlook is good, then silver's outlook is also good. Uh, we produce about 700,000 ounces of silver. It is a byproduct for us. Uh, so, again, if the silver price goes up, we'll make more money, and that should be good for our shareholders. How much of that optimism from silver comes not only because of the outlook for gold, but also because it's now sort of trading like an industrial metal? Yeah, I, th I, think, I think it does have industrial use, which gold doesn't. Gold is seen as more a, as a currency. But I think investors in this environment, which is they're looking for opportunities, they're looking for asset classes uh, which don't have exposure to you know, the, the, the general economy, uh, they're going to keep looking for opportunities where stores of value are, are, are the thing to go to. And gold and silver, I think silver would be predominantly still getting a bid uh, because of its perceived store of value and a cousin of gold. And Jake, the $2,000 an ounce is a forecast that we're increasingly seeing from more and more analysts uh, out there. Do you think it can get that high? And what sort of factors would need to fall into place for those levels to be reached? I, I think it's more of the same. I, I, I really think what you've got is an environment where you know, governments are needing to print this money. Uh, you're getting all these fiscal stimulus programs. Australia announced its, its biggest deficit ever or since World War II yesterday, uh, there is a need for fis fiscal stimulus. Uh, and and, and in, a, a, in an environment where you have real yields now down to almost zero, uh, in some cases negative, uh, you have this wave of money that is looking for a home. And as I keep coming back to the fact that gold is the one currency that can't be printed, it is becoming more and more in front of investors' minds that every investor is looking for an exposure to gold and again, I say that our job at Evolution is to make ourselves an attractive opportunity for those investors. Right. So how quickly can you move to capture the high price environment and the momentum that we're seeing in prices? Because I know plans to expand your coal mine in New South Wales are ahead of, of schedule. So does that mean that you have the capacity and ability to add more to production? So we're a business that is focused on margin over volume, and, and we need to bank every dollar. So you say, when can we bank? When can we achieve that? We can do that every day. Every day we're producing gold safely and efficiently. We need to be banking every dollar above our long-term forecast, and we are. You saw in the last quarter, we had record net mine cash flows. 
Uh, we're paying record dividends. We, our, our, our policy is to pay more than 50, up to 50% of our cash flow as a dividend. Uh, we are making more money than we've ever made. And I think that's the critical part. In the past, uh, gold companies have tended to follow the gold price uh, and start allocating capital in places which don't deliver appropriate returns. At Evolution, we're very focused on the fact that we are stewards of investors' capital, custodians. Uh, and if we can't find a way to spend it that earns them a better return, uh, earns us a better return and them, we ought to give it back to them. So we've paid 13 consecutive dividends. We intend to declare a final dividend uh, in the next few weeks with our, uh, our end of year results uh, and very focused on returning money to shareholders and allocating capital only where it provides appropriate returns for the risks being taken. So, Jake, uh, tell us a little bit about your plans here in North America. Where do you see evolution when it comes to Canada, North America? And will you look in the future to add further operations or even potentially uh, a value in listing in Toronto or elsewhere in the region? So we, we bought the Red Lake mine in, in Ontario, Canada in, in November last year. Uh, our experience to date has been incredibly positive there. Uh, we bought a mine that had some skeptics thinking, gee, what have you bought? Uh, but to date, what we've been really amazed by uh, is the opportunity which that mine is presenting. Uh, we recognize that success over there is our ticket to doing more things in North America. So we need to do that first. Uh, we are achieving some great things at Red Lake. Uh, we've managed to rationalize the workforce. We've improved productivity. We're getting development rates up. Uh, we're making money well ahead of where we expected to be making money at Red Lake. Uh, and the opportunity in front of us is exceeding our most optimistic expectations. Uh, but we do recognize, as I said, that we need to demonstrate its success. We've only been uh, had, had ownership for just over three months. The team's doing a great job over there. But we are open for business in Canada. Uh, we do think that jurisdictions like Australia and Canada, places where you can rely on the rule of law, uh, where you can uh, certainly hire and, and recruit very talented teams, are places which are going to be increasingly attractive to investors. How acquisitive are you feeling these days, Jake? Or does the high price environment mean that buyers or owners, I should say, are less willing to let go of their prized assets? We've always said that you know, we're in a cyclical business and we're obviously in a very positive part of the cycle at the moment. Uh, you need, in my view, a motivated seller uh, to, to do something which is accretive for our shareholders, which, which we're trying to do. There are very few motivated sellers out there at the moment because money is easily available. People are feeling good about this higher gold price. So I'm, I'm, I'm more tepid on the opportunities out there for accretive acquisitions. Um, you know, there, there is money flowing into the more junior and, and development companies, the explorers and development companies. The majors have largely sold out of the assets which they've wanted to dispose of. So, so I, I, I think now is the time to be harvesting cash and making cash uh, rather than making big-scale acquisitions.